All right, we're going to talk about today the effects of changing dimensions proportionally. The objective, I will learn to describe the effects on perimeter and area when one or more dimensions of a figure change and apply this relationship between perimeter and area in problem solving. All right, so we're going to start by looking at a basic rectangle that's 4 by 7. The area is going to be length times width, which is 7 times 4, which comes out to be 28 centimeters squared. All right, we're going to take that original area and we're going to kind of see what happens when we uh, change some things. So my original is 4 by 7. If I double both the width and the length, that's going to change to a 8 by 14. So my new area comes out to be 112. Um, my next one, 3 times as long, so that's going to be 12 by 21. 12 times 21 comes out to be 252. Um, now I want to do half as long, so that's going to be um, half of 4 is 2, half of 7 is 3.5, 2 times 3.5 comes out to be 7, and then if I do 1 fourth as long, one fourth of four is one, one fourth of seven is seven fourths. Okay, so that comes out to be seven fourths for my area. And right, now I want to compare the new area to the original. So this is going to be 112 over 28, 252 over 28, 7 over 28, and then seven fourths over 28. All right, reducing all of these gives me four here. 25, 252 over 28 is 9. This reduces to 1 fourth, and this comes out to 1 sixteenth. All right, and then so the question is, what is happening? Excuse me, is there a pattern um, when I change these dimensions? How does it affect my new area? All right, so if I look at this, um, I changed here my width by a factor of 2, or times 2. I did the same thing here, times 2. All right, here I did times 3 for the width, and I did times 3 on the length. Here I did times 1 half times 1 half, and then times 1 fourth times 1 fourth. Well, what is times 2 times 2? That gives me a factor of 4. 3 times 3 gives me 9. 1 half times 1 half gives me 1 fourth. 1 fourth times 1 fourth is 1 16. So what happens is, my conjecture would be that if each dimension changes by a scale factor of some number, we'll call that number, um, I don't know, we'll call it... Um, D, then the area changes excuse me, it changes by a factor of D squared. Right, so in essence what I'm saying is that if I know my new my original area is 28 and I'm doubling each side. Really, what I'm what I can do is kind of a shortcut is I can take 28 excuse me, times 2 squared, and that comes out to 112. All right, same thing if I know that my dimensions are tripled, then the area, I can take the area and I can do 28 times 3 squared, and I get 252. So it's a shortcut. I can predict what the new area is going to be if I know the original area and I know my scale factors. All right, so let's look at an example. Um, the area of an equilateral triangle is 36 square to 3 square meters. What would the new area be if its base and height were tripled? So I can take my original area. I don't need to know what the base and height actually, what their measurements actually are, because I'm changing both of them by a factor of 3. I could take my original area of 36 square roots of 3 and multiply that by 3 times 3 or by 9. All right, and that gives me 324 square roots of 3 meters squared. 
The next one, the area of a rhombus is 40 square inches. What would the new area be if each diagonal was halved? Um, formula for a rhombus, if you don't remember, that's one half diagonal one times diagonal two. All right, but since the original area is 40, and I'm taking each diagonal and I'm cutting that in half, that's going to be one half times one half. That right, ends up being 40 times one fourth. Okay, and that comes out to be just 10. The next one, the area of a square of a triangle is 36 square millimeters. Suppose the height was three times as long and the base was four times as long. What would be the area of the new triangle? In this case, I'm changing the height by a factor of three and the base by a factor of four. So I'm going to do 36 times three times four since each one has its own scale factor. So 36 times 3 times 4 comes out to be 432 millimeters squared. All right, now we're going to look at um, perimeter, see what happens with the perimeter. So I have a 6 by 4 rectangle this time, and I want the perimeter. Now remember the perimeter, you have a formula of 2L plus 2W, or you could use perimeter is equal to 2 times L plus W. Same thing. Um, if it's 6 by 4, then your perimeter comes out to be 20 units. All right, and we're going to change, kind of do the same thing we did with area. We're going to double the length and the width, so that's going to be 8 and 12. So my new one becomes 40. If I do 3 times as long, that's going to be 12 and 18, which comes out to be 60. And then I want to go half of 4, 6 is 3. So that becomes 10. Right. And then we got one fourth of the width, so that's going to be 1. One fourth of 6 comes out to be 3 halves. So my perimeter comes out to be 5. Um, new perimeter is 40 over 20, 60 over 20, 10 over 20, and then 5 over 20. If I reduce these in lowest terms, that gives me a 2. This gives me 3 one half, and this comes out to be one fourth. All right, so kind of the same thinking we did with the perimeter. If I take these and I'm multiplying here by a factor of times two and times two, um, well that comes out to be the perimeter is twice as big as the original. Here it's times three times three, so that works there. That's the same. Times one half times one half, then times one fourth times one fourth. All right, so my conjecture for this one is that if I change both dimensions, if they change by some scale factor, um, by scale factor, and we'll call this one, I guess like we did earlier, we'll call it D, then the perimeter also changes by a factor of d. Okay, it changes by a scale factor of d. Right. So area with squared perimeter is just to the first power. So let's look at this. The perimeter of an equilateral triangle is 36 millimeters. Suppose the height was three times as long and the base is four times as long. What would be the perimeter of the new triangle? All right, um, I don't really need the height for perimeter, so I can kind of ignore that out. Um, the base is four times as long. Um, if it's an equilateral triangle and we just let all sides be x, and I want the perimeter, that's going to be 3x is equal to 36 divided by 3, that gives me x is 12. So each side is 12. All right. um, but really, since kind of based on this conjecture here, if I'm changing all the sides, because um, I do want it to remain an equilateral triangle, I'm just going to take the perimeter, the original perimeter of 36, and I want to multiply that by 4 to get my new perimeter. Uh, and 36 times 4 comes out to 144. So my new perimeter is 144 millimeters.